We refer to today as Victory Sunday. It is a celebration of how God has shaped Pleasant Hill during 2023. We get to recall some great milestones that occurred here at the church. This year we welcomed 26 new members. 13 transferred their membership and 18 were baptized and gave their life to Christ for the first time. So there's a hallelujah right there. But uh, let's see, let's review a little bit. Many of these people you know and met and some you come to different services and you haven't intermixed yet. But January we started out on the 18th with Brad and Chris Lonis and their son Brock being baptized. On January 29th, Daisy Mulch was baptized. March was a busy month. Ben and Cheryl Bishop transferred their membership. Scott and Jessica Grosenheider were baptized. And then Meredith Yard and her two children, Montgomery and Madison, transferred their membership as well. April, we saw Mike and Marilyn McAnelly transfer their membership. Dan and Peggy Brown became members. And then Sawyer Dallin and Grayson Thacker were baptized in April also. June 18th, Joe and Jane Bierman placed their membership here. And then we had the youth go into camp. June 30th, Hank Fletcher was baptized out of Camp Mac. Next month in July, on the 12th, his sister Hattie Fletcher was baptized out of Camp Mac also. Later in July, on the 23rd, Nick Fetter was baptized out of Camp Mac. Always good to hear about the influence of the camp out there, for sure. In August, Aaron Jenkins was baptized, and his wife Sarah transferred her membership here as well. And then September 20th, we welcomed David and Rochelle Wolf through baptism. November saw three high school men give their life in baptism. That was November 5th, brothers Isaiah and Isaac Matley. And then on November 11th, Zach Sale was baptized. Then early in December, Mick Worley was baptized and his wife Nanette transferred her membership here also. And we always get excited to welcome new babies into the congregation this year. It's kind of a small year, only three new births, but you know, we'll take them all, we'll take them all. Uh, May 26th, uh, Drew Austin Thomas was born to Kyle and Skyler. And then July 31st, Ford James Grosenheider was born to Scott and Jessica. And then October 3rd, Cameron James Freeman was born to David and Laura. And weddings are always a great time to rejoice. In 2023, we celebrated the weddings uh, on April 15th. Uh, Ashley Young was wed to Cody Henderson. And then December 16th, Jessica Hall said her I do's to Adam Emery. And while we celebrate a lot of highlights throughout the year here at Pleasant Hill, we certainly had a few bumps along the way as well. This year, two individuals from our family went to their promised home in heaven to reside with Jesus. Our church's first loss of 2023 came early when we said goodbye to Catherine Kitty Crawford on February 23rd. Kitty was born July 8th, 1938 in Litchfield, and she was obedient to Jesus in baptism when she attended church camp as a youth. Kitty was 83 years old when God called her home. She was blessed with a strong husband, and they had a very unique start. On June 9th, back in 1956, they traveled to Holly Springs, Mississippi, went to a Standard Oil gas station, met the Justice of the Peace there, and he married them. And that union stuck for 66 years until God called her home. Together they built quite a legacy. Six children, 12 grandchildren, 14 great-grandchildren, and three great-great-grandchildren. She was blessed with a very full 83 years. She became a member 
of Pleasant Hill Christian Church on Christmas Day in 1955. So she had a continuous membership for 67 years here at the Hill. She was a homemaker most of her life. She had six kids. Harold worked a lot of long hours, so she would keep the home going, caring for the kids, meals, laundry, cleaning, as you can imagine. Then she threw in a few extracurricular activities. She dug the basement under their house with a five-gallon bucket and a spade under the crawl space. She helped uh, build some outbuildings with Harold. Of course, gardening, chauffeuring, all the shopping, doctor visits. At home, being a nurse, a referee, a judge, and a disciplinarian with six children. Hard worker, her and Harold made a great team. She did try to work at Owen's service station once but she said the six kids trashed the house and about ran off the sitter. <laughs> Cost her more to go work outside the home than did to stay home and take care of it herself. She loved to square dance, paint, flower garden, outdoors, watching birds, photography, doing family genealogy, singing and playing the guitar. She did quite a bit of visiting nursing homes and she entertained the residents there with her music for quite a few years. Little known fact, Kitty actually recorded an album of her own. And Kitty loved serving the Lord here at Pleasant Hill. She had been a Sunday school teacher. Of course, she provided food at church dinners and Camp Mac. She volunteered at love packages, helped send Bibles and Christian literature around the world. She also traveled to and helped build homes in Mexico with many of you fellow Pleasant Hill people. She drove all over the county picking up grandkids, taking them to Sunday school, church, camp, youth rallies, and vacation Bible schools. We lost an incredibly fine Christian lady, plus an excellent cook. Our church family certainly misses her. Kitty loved the Lord. She prayed for so many people, knowing that Jesus heard her prayers. We miss her laugh and her smile. She was a faithful follower of Christ. Our church's other loss in 2023 came when we said goodbye to Marilyn Hammond on August the 1st. Marilyn was born November 15th, of 51 in Springfield. She was 50, 71 years old when God called her home. Marilyn had graduated from Athens High School in 1970. She loved to learn. She earned her Associate of Art in English and Writing from Lincoln Land Community College. Then she went on to get a Bachelor of Arts in English Literature from Sagamon State University. Merlin was a valuable employee of the Illinois State Board of Education for over 40 years before she lost her sight. Merlin met her husband, Dale, at a very unusual courtship activity. They were attending a funeral visitation, introduced to each other right there in 71. They dated for over four years, and they were married on January 17th, 1976 at Pleasant Hill Christian Church. They celebrated 41 anniversaries before Dale passed away in 2017. Merlin was a history expert, especially studying Abraham Lincoln. I believe she knew him very well, probably second only to Mary Todd Lincoln. <laughs> and she also loved the storied life of Princess Di. Marilyn loved to travel and she wasn't afraid to go. Dale, not so much. So she would travel with her sister-in-law, Lois Pepper. Dale would always worry about Marilyn and Lois taking off on all of her trips. But Marilyn drove down to Dallas, drove through the city to see where JFK was shot. 
They drove to Niagara Falls. She motored down to the Biltmore Mansion. And she drove all the way out and through San Francisco. Lois said Dale was always stressed about them leaving, but not Marilyn. Marilyn was confident and ready to hit the road. Now, Dale and Marilyn's travels were much more limited. That usually meant a rental cabin at Lake of the Ozarks. They would go down there whenever Dale would talk her into it. Marilyn really did not have the patience to fish. And Marilyn really did not like the water. So when Dale talked her into it, he would go fishing for five days. And Marilyn would read, and she wanted to learn. She would often read 40 books in the cabin while Dale fished for five days. Marilyn and Dale had a special relationship. They certainly completed each other. Marilyn had a devout and unwavering faith. She was a very active member here at Pleasant Hill Christian Church. She was baptized here and became a member in the original building of April, in April 23 of 1988. Marilyn served as the preschool Sunday school teacher for 30 consecutive years. She delighted in introducing the children to Jesus. She could have a stern and sometimes gruff exterior around adults, but she would do anything for a child. She served at Pleasant Hill as song leader for many years also, and she was a prayer warrior as well. She really enjoyed receiving the church updates and prayer requests that went out to the congregation. After she lost her sight almost 12 years ago, she would commit those names to memory and pray for them repeatedly. And most importantly, she worshiped Jesus and followed him all of her life. Now she and Kitty have reached their heavenly home and they are worshiping their savior in his presence. For our departed members, we remember them fondly to lift their families in our prayers. We pray that everyone know they didn't just leave us, but they have gone to heaven, indeed at home with their Lord. We also acknowledge that others here in our church family have said goodbye to family members and loved ones this year as well. Those are never easy to get through. Evidenced by the remembrance trees in the back of the church, many names to be prayed for. We keep your losses in our prayers as well. But Pleasant Hill stands firm on the word of God. We have faith in the promise that we shall all participate in a great reunion someday of believers in heaven, hosted by the Savior who tells us that. It's him we trust. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the many ways you blessed Pleasant Hill during 2023. We hope our worship, our activities, our programs and decisions have been pleasing to you. We thank you for the life and vitality these new babies bring to the hill. May we surround these families and support them and lift them in our prayers. We thank you for blessing our church with new members. Let us continue to reach out to more family and friends to unite them with your kingdom. Help us hold closely to the memories you gave us of the two special individuals that now reside in heaven. We celebrate the fact that we can be reunited in glory through the death of Jesus. Kitty and Marilyn, both took pieces of our heart to heaven, but we are thankful for the memories we keep here. You are a mighty God, and we are so thankful for all your blessings in 2023. We look forward to walking through 2024 with you in charge of our church, our communities, and our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Before I turn it over to Dave, he's got about six minutes left to preach. Um, <laughs> mention one more significant milestone to you. There are many people in the congregation that do wonderful works for the kingdom. And uh, it takes us all day to list all those accomplishments. But there's one special milestone we want to mention today. Several years ago, Bill Hanyadi had picked up a load of scrap on the back of his truck. And he brought the cash to me on that next Sunday and said, I just want to give this money to the mission team. They're always doing good things. I want to give this to the mission team. Well, after that, he started <coughs> cultivating the idea of collecting more scrap for the mission team. And today we call this little adventure the Heavy Metal Missions Team. Bill asked for assistance after a while, and now almost every Tuesday, a group of men scour the region and they haul in appliances, farm machinery, automobiles, anything folks are done with. Ben Bishop has been a real strong supporter of this. He has a little flyer now. As he drives around the community, he may knock on your door and see if you want your yard cleaned up. Uh, it's gone pretty well so far. People have been receptive to that, and they brought in a whole bunch of metal because of his forward thinking. Several of you men are here now, been part of that ministry. We thank you for all you've done. We're pleased to announce that this year the total cash donated through Heavy Metal Missions has hit an annual high. This year, these gentlemen topped $20,000 picking up at homes and recycling it. Quite a continuous accomplishment, and we're very proud of your efforts for helping the church. Preacher Dave, you got anything left? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, happy New, Year, New Year's, everyone. And uh, can't think of a better way to, to end this year than to gather together. And uh, on Sunday morning, it's so good to reflect on our past and to look forward to what uh, the challenges God has before us. Welcome all of our guests. We know it's a busy weekend, been a busy, busy holiday season, and we value uh, you taking time uh, and honor us by being with us today. Uh, I also want to thank you for uh, going to one of our two services. If you take a look at this chart, at 4 o'clock, uh, our Christmas Eve service, 298. Now, the easy thing about counting was you just had to count the empty chairs. Only 19 empty chairs in that first service, 298. Second service in at 6 had 153 for a new record of 451 people here Christmas Eve. <laughs> Great job. Now, already you see we have a problem. We'll have to address that next year, what to do. So uh, two options. We either had a third service or uh, we try to get about 100 that we're planning on going to that 4 o'clock to shift down to 6 um, because we want to make room for whoever you're inviting, right? And so uh, we'll, we'll talk about that next year. It's a great problem to have. President Biden has yet to announce his State of the Union address date uh, to Congress. And we know when he does that, uh, he'll be talking about important issues like the economy and taxes, uh, health care, foreign affairs, uh, Israel's war with Hamas, uh, Russia's uh, invasion of the Ukraine, our immigration and our border problem. And it's always interesting to see the response of those listening to the president. As you have uh, seen it before, half of the, one half of it would be the, all the Democrats over there, and the other half all the Republicans over here. And whenever the current administration uh, says something that their side likes, they just stand up and they cheer and they holler. The other side sits on their hands, you know, and just kind of, and they just keep thinking, you know, wait till November 5th, wait till November 5th. But so different here because when we talk about the state of Pleasant Hill, it's great to know that we're all on the same side and we're enthusiastically cheering what God is doing in our church. Amen? Amen. Our handbook is the Bible, and the book of Acts uh, shows us there that the early Christians set a precedent that they would get together at times, everyone together, and they would uh, report on what God was doing. After the apostle Paul and Barnabas uh, completed their first missionary journey. We're told in Acts 14, on arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them. And that's what we're doing. 
We're going to report what God has done through us. Uh, and then also we're going to be looking into uh, next year and, and challenging us what we're hearing God wanting us to do next year. That's why we want to report to you the great things that he's been doing. It's kind of like a family chat, though. Healthy families, that kind of get together, they sit down, plan out the future, uh, they, they sit down and talk. And we, if you're not a member, we certainly invite you for this gathering. And we would hope that as you've discovered what God has been doing here, that you would join us in our family here at Pleasant Hill. So as we celebrate what God is doing in our church, the first thing that we should do is this. Number one, thank God for his blessings behind us. Now, Darren did a whole bunch of that. Uh, you know, as I examine our church, I feel somewhat like a doctor who's examining a pretty healthy patient. We're not all perfect, but we are healthy. In fact, if you're looking for the perfect church, you're never going to be satisfied. There's a little poem by one of my favorite authors or poets named Anonymous that said this about a perfect church. If you should find a perfect church without one fault or smear, for goodness sake, don't join that church. You'll spoil the atmosphere. So since no perfect church exists where people never sin, just stop looking for a perfect church and love the church you're in. I would say in serve and worship and add that to the poem too. But this year will mark Pleasant Hill's 156th year uh, together as a church family. There are many positive factors that we really can't uh, tabulate uh, objectively. Uh, you know, but, but, but they're there. There's a hunger for God's Word in this church, which is just uh, phenomenal. There's a desire to spend time in prayer for one another. There's all the love that exists among our members and a precious unity that we enjoy. Those are blessings that you can't really put on a chart. Um, we also then, as Darren has shared with us about marriages and births and baptisms and graduations to heaven, uh, but, but I don't want to spend, uh, that, that, that's, we need to shift now, let's start looking toward next year. Uh, I want to talk about, secondly then, to trust God for his challenges before us. I want to lay out some specific challenges uh, as we face the next 12 months. All of these are things that only God can accomplish uh, through us. We, we can't do it on our own, and so we're looking to God and in his strength to get these accomplished. Number one would be this challenge. Continue to be an inviting church family and be ready for our average attendance of our two Sunday morning services to push past 275 as an average each week on the way to 300 each week. And um, uh, there's no reason why we, we can't do that. This year, we broke through the 250 average uh, attendance each Sunday. So even if we had a, a down percentage growth of down to 10%, you would see that would be 275. So we know we can, we, we know we can do that. So let's go ahead and let's push on through the 300 barrier. Now it took a little longer than we thought to get through the 250 barrier um, because of COVID. Some of the guests that were here just starting to get their feet in, you know, under the table. Uh, they weren't in solid enough that when COVID hit, they never did have come back. Also, what is happening, and this is occurring across the world, and particularly uh, we know by stats in our, our country, that the average number of Sundays an average church attender uh, attends is now um, at, uh, at, at about two Sundays a month. So whereas if you went back, say, let's say 30 years, you would be at three and a half working your way towards four Sundays. You had people coming uh, every week. But now we have a, 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 a we dropped uh, even, even Pleasant Hill. I think we're doing better than the rest of the nation for, uh, on that, though. Um, but we're down to about two Sundays a month ourselves. Remember what God, uh, kind of God that we have? Jesus gives us a picture to see him, uh, who our God is like in Luke chapter 15, that he's the kind of God who's a shepherd and has 100 sheep. And that if one of the sheep were to wander off, he would leave 99 safe in the fold, and he would go out to rescue the one lost lamb. Verse 5 tells us, and when the shepherd finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, Jesus went on to say, in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. We're a church family now, 
If we've created everybody together, and, and it really, you can't do it, there's always going to be somebody sick, some people out of town on vacation or, or business, uh, that kind of thing. But we have a church family now of those who call Pleasant Hill their church home of nearly 500 people. But all around us, at school, at work, in our neighborhoods, uh, at the ball fields, um, there are thousands of people who the Lord would consider missing. So let's ask God to give us this increasing burden for our one, uh, either one individual or one family, who God has strategically placed us uh, in a place of influence uh, to uh, invest in them or to just cross their path and invite them to come out to Pleasant Hill and to see the hope and the forgiveness of sins that we've experienced that they can be theirs. And realize just one invite can change a life. Just one invite, we've already proven it, can literally uh, change a person's life and, and get them on a, a road again with uh, their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Second challenge, then, is to supply all the manpower and the monies needed to meet these challenges of 2024 and beyond. We take our model of serving structure for our church right out of the New Testament. Our elders lead out in oversight and with authority uh, in their role as we organize ourselves around ministry teams of service. So please know that we've been working and increasing the availability for each of us to have places to serve within the church as well as opportunities to serve out in our communities. Our elders have been working to revamp our ministry team structure. You'll be hearing more of that through the month of January as we want to really hit it uh, off and running here this year. We're also thrilled to announce that for the first year, God has blessed our giving uh, his, uh, through, through uh, our, our giving, his giving through us to the work of the ministry here at Pleasant Hill. For the first year, the general offering that, that has come in is over $500,000 in one year. Now, also remember that 15% of that uh, always goes to our uh, mission work, our local mission, foreign mission, and our benevolence work. And so if you do that math, 15% of 500000 that's 75000 dollars have went to mission work. Okay, you add to that the work of heavy metal ministries, and you have ninety-five thousand before we even have an offering today. Okay, so we are approaching the hundred thousand, a hundred thousand dollars that goes beyond ourselves, and the Lord truly is blessing that, um, and, and we uh, are thankful for that. We look forward to doing that uh, in even greater extent next year. Third challenge is experience the life and heart of Jesus as never before. Next week, we're going to launch into a year-long pursuit of Jesus that's entitled Quest 52. Now, some of you are already beginning to think, now, wait a minute, is that by Mark Moore? I remember we did a study five years ago entitled Core 52. The, whole, the principle is there's 52 weeks of uh, devotional material here with also uh, 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 action items that we're to do. And just like we did five years ago, we're going to, uh, at many, many Sundays, not all Sundays of the year, but many Sundays, uh, Kyle and I will be introducing the week's uh, topic, and it'll be uh, 52 weeks of concentrating on experiencing the life and the heart of Jesus, who Jesus is, his expectations, his priorities, and his ultimate purposes for you. Uh, the goal will be to enhance each of our understandings of Jesus as we're forever changed in how we make choices, how we engage with others, how we interpret what God is doing within our society, and even how we view ourselves. So after our services next week, each family will have an opportunity to pick up a, a, a copy as we uh, uh, introduce that and launch it next week. Challenge number four is this, make every effort to become more like Christ. Follows right up on what we're doing, uh, organizing our uh, education and our sermon time. Uh, for 2024. You know, three of my favorite words are keep your fork. Amen. All right. Keep your fork. Don't you love that? I mean, you're, you're done with the meal and your host or hostess is starting to collect, you know, uh, the table things there, the scraps and all, they're starting to clean that up. But they, oh, oh, keep your fork because you know what's coming, right? Two of my favorite spiritual words are these. I'm ready. I'm ready. 
I know what I need to do. I know what God is asking me to do. I am ready. That question came up often in Scripture. It came more in the idea of what must I do or what should I do next. Patriarchs, they answered that. The prophets answered that. Jesus and the apostles answered that. The apostle Peter, he answered it in this way. <clears throat> Second Peter chapter 1. He says this, for, for this very reason, make every effort. Those are one of my three uh, or three words for this year. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness. Then to that goodness add knowledge. And to knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, mutual affection. To mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measures, they will keep you from being ineffective. Everybody, uh, let's boo ineffective. Boo, ineffective, right? And unproductive, boo, in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they've been cleansed from their past sins. Now, Peter introduced, I started at verse 5 there, he introduced by telling us who we are first. Verse 1 says, and we don't have it on the screen, it says, To those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours, grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Savior. And so that's our blessing we want for 2024. But then he brings it down and says, here's the reality. His power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Jesus who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, Jesus has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. The rest of the world is just out there, uh, you know, unable to experience the divine nature, the divine, the divine side of life. But we've been given everything we need, and as we increase then, as we make every effort to increase that, We'll be able to participate in the divine nature and we'll escape the corruption in of this world that's caused by evil desires. And so the Apostle Peter shows us that our, uh, uh, our relationship with Christ, we should make every effort in and keep it as effective and productive as we can. That's going to be our vision for 2024. We want to be a community of believers who connect to God and become more like Jesus. Now the assumption is that there would be that growth, that, that as we, uh, as I stand here a year from now, that we could have one of you pop up and say, and give a testimony, that here is how you've grown uh, a year, you know, in the past 52 weeks, that at the end of 2024, here's the progress I've made uh, since the end of 2023. I've made every effort. Now, the offer this church then makes to you is very simple. We're going to make every effort to do everything we can to make all of that possible. Uh, Darren and Kyle, elders Larry Sarver, Ed Hammond, uh, Tom Walls, and myself, all of our ministry team leaders, we will make every effort to make that possible here. You know, New Year's resolutions are abounding right now. Most are going to be, I need to eat a little better, need to get a little better shape right, reduce debt, you know, that kind of thing break some bad habits. Those are all noble. They're all good. My plea for us this morning for 2024 is that we would uh, invest ourselves in becoming more like Jesus. Amen? Because the world needs people like Jesus. God wants us to be those people. He wants them to use us to his glory then to affect others' lives for eternity. And so as we look into 2024, there's going to be, there, there's all this stuff that's going on, you know, that's going to follow us into next year. There'll be some surprises that we didn't even know was waiting for us. But like the Apostle Peter, as we look out in our society, these words still ring true. Lord, to whom should we go? You have the words of life. So will you decide to make a better effort in 2024? Will you commit yourself to make every effort to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus? Will Jesus become your passion this year? It's going to be entirely up to you. We should never be satisfied with any empty seats at any of our services because they represent missing people who need to know that Jesus cares for them, that Jesus can offer them hope, offer them forgiveness, and eternal life. Always thinking towards who's the next one 
Who's the next one? And one more, one more, and one more after that. Always striving for one more. God's been so good to us at Pleasant Hill. The best is yet to be as we trust him for our future. Let's take a look at this video. What are you Gosh, doing? Glenn, it's New Year's Eve. Gosh. No, it's 8.30. Yeah, well, if I'd woke you up at midnight, you probably wouldn't even have talked to me tomorrow. You know me so well. All right, that was fun. I'm going to bed. Wait. Wait, wait. Wait, sit with me. You know we're not going to make it to midnight, Liv. Uh, look, we can ring in the new year now. Why do I feel like this is some clever disguise to get me into some deep conversation right now? Huh? Huh? Well, you know me well. All right, well, it'll be the last serious discussion of the year, so praise the Lord. Oh, perfect. I love it. No, I don't. That's not. <laughs> but I will listen to you. Do I ever change? Is this one of those questions that's not a question? No, just I never... <laughs> Nothing about me ever changes. I just, it's the same old me, it's the same old habits, the same recipe that I got out from the magazine the year we were married, and the same New Year's decoration. No, you don't need to do that. It's just, nothing about me ever changes. You change? Yeah. Sweetheart, you do? Like, 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 like your hair. You, you, you changed your hair last year. No. Yeah, you, you dyed it. Yes. No. You changed the format or something of it, huh? Oh, okay, okay. I'm not. I'm not into hair, sweetheart. I just you don't get it. Tomorrow is going to be a new year, and I'm gonna wake up and be the same person I've been for years. The whole year will go by. Nothing's gonna change. Don't you want to see a change in me? And you? And us? Gosh, in anything? Sure. Sure? Yeah. That's it? Liv, I have no idea what I want for this upcoming year. And if there's one thing I do know, I have no idea what you want. That's a wise man. Thank you. <laughs> Here's an idea. Why don't we just pray about it? Wait, wait are, you being, are you being serious right now? Yes, yes, I'm being serious. <laughs> Why don't you and I us together, just pray about it. We'll just ask God what he wants for this upcoming year, okay? And we'll just try to listen. <laughs> you know me so well. <laughs> Maybe I'll call you hang up? Yeah, sure. I like it. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you that you never let us go. Thank you for new chapters. Thank you for Lily in her heart and how she sees the world. Thank you, God, for two years. Thank you, God. I'll call and I'll hang up, okay? Let's pray together. Father, we do know that all that you have in store for us next year it's going to take your empowerment to do it. So we pray that each of us, Lord, help us to be vessels of, uh, that are open to your mercy, to your grace that you want to pour out upon us and then into other people. So we pray, Lord, for, our, for ourselves individually that it would be a year of great growth in our walk with Christ. We also want to pray for uh, each other that you would help us to strengthen uh, and uh, deepen uh, each of our family's relationships, Lord. We know that in the year to come, there's going to be surprises, there's going to be difficulties, uh, maybe even walking through the valley of the shadow, Lord. And so we pray that you would help us to, um, to be close to each other, to bear one another's burdens, uh, to support and encourage and strengthen one another. Help us, Lord, to uh, not just be concerned about ourselves, and, uh, but that we open ourselves up to, to truly caring for each other. Thank you for this family of believers, Lord. We do pray that you would help us to expand it, Lord. So help us to open uh, ourselves up to who you would want us to uh, be a, a, an instrument of invitation, of encouraging to someone else to begin a journey 
uh, or to get back on the road, Lord, to following after uh, Jesus. Father, we know that it'll come only by your strength, and so we do it for your glory, for your glory alone. This old world needs God. And even though the calendar year is changing, the need for God does not change. If anything, we need God more, a whole lot more. Everyone here this morning can likely think of multiple situations in which this world uh, needs God and needs him to be allowed to be having a number one role. Then in turn, this would create a more tranquil, fruitful setting. Messages in secular songs are one such example that often reflect that need for God. It doesn't matter as to which generation or genre of music one listens. The necessity for God often becomes distinctively evident in the music's lyrics. Currently, Billboard's number one airplayed country hit, Save Me, is one such example. Jelly Roll originally recorded this song in 2020 on an album entitled Self-Medicated. He released it again on his 2023 album, Whitsit Chapel, singing it as a duet with Lainey Wilson, and it became a major hit. I'd like to share with you a few of the song's lyrics. Somebody save me, me from myself. I spent so long living in hell. Something inside me is broken. I hold on to anything that sets me free. And all of my sorrows, I just wash them down. It's the only peace I've ever found. I'm a lost cause. Baby, don't waste your time on me. I'm so damaged beyond repair. Life has shattered my hopes and my dreams. Jelly Roll, an ex-con, whose real name is Jason Ford, confesses that the lyrics to this song move around his feelings of defeat, de uh, desperation, self-loathe, and hopelessness associated with his addictions. This is truly a sad story, and yet we can all relate on some level. After all, who hasn't felt times of defeat and hopelessness? Yet, what is even sadder is the fact that so many people in our world are either unaware or unaccepting of what truly can bring peace and set one free. This old world needs God. God and his perfect plan. Hebrews 11.40 says, God has planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Let me read that again. God has planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. The author goes on to say in chapter 12, verses 2 and 3, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endures such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by sinful nature, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us 
who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the Spirit. Jelly Roll's album titles, which include the single Save Me, go from self-medicated to Whitsit Chapel, indicating Jason's awareness that he can't save himself, but rather something related to church can. Now, I'm not sure what Jason's current relationship is uh, with the Lord, and I hope it's growing and thriving and maturing daily, but that's not really for us to judge. Rather, we are here to reflect on the sacrifice Jesus made on that cross. We are here to remember he is the only one who can truly save and set us free. We are here to remember he is the only one that can fix the broken, and because of him, the damage we've done is not beyond repair. We are here to remember we are no longer a lo lost because we've been found. We are here to remember that in Jesus Christ, real hope and genuine peace truly abound. This whole world needs God, God and his perfect plan. Let's go to him in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we can meet here, meet here on uh, your day, and I pray that we make it your day. I pray that we will take to heart your word, your challenges, and accept your love and your grace and your forgiveness, and then be able to carry out and be better examples for you. We thank you now for this time of communion that we can remember the horrible death on a cross that Jesus was willing to take for us so that we might be made perfect again. We thank you for your love and your encouragement and for you always being here with us, that you hear us when we call your name. And I pray that we will continue to spend time beyond communion with you as we enter the new year. We thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen.